now, I want you to come right here to the front of this altar. If, if you've got an incurable, impossible situation, it's incurable, it's impossible, and you need a right now miracle, I want you to come right here. It's incurable. It's impossible. Maybe, maybe it's not terminal, but you have to live with it for your whole life. And you don't want to live like that anymore. Come right here, right now. Come on, I need a right now miracle. I don't need to wait to the end of the meeting. I need a right now, right this moment, right this moment miracle. I need some ushers. We'll start right here. Come on, Lord. That anointing's on you. Jesus. My hands are like electricity. here now in the name what's wrong with you not now in the name of Jesus what's your condition okay <laughs> lay your hand on her hip power of God's on you can you feel that God on you. 
top of your head to the soles of your feet. Is there pain there? Not today? Okay, I wouldn't be right now. That anointing's too strong for it. Can you do anything that you couldn't do before? How is it? What is it? Painful? Yeah. Where's the pain now? Not there at all. Father, let it never come back in the name of Jesus. Now don't worry about it. Sometimes I talk to people, sometimes I don't. It's fine. Just receive it by the hand of God. That anointing is just coming. Sometimes it's stronger when I don't talk to anybody. Power of God's honor. What's your condition, sister? It's good? Did he say it's good? Oh, it's gone. Close your eyes. Touch her. Power of God's on her. Hey, a little wobbly, huh? That's the anointing. In the name of Jesus. Just thank him right now all over this place. Thank him right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What's her name? Just put that in on Jesus. Touch him. Glory. God's on. Glory. What's happening to you, sister? My hands hurt when I work. I'm 36 years old and I don't want to get out. You're a youngster. Yeah. What's happening now? Where's the pain now? In my hands. Is there still this pain in your hands right now? Yeah. Gone. Glory. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Just thank him. Anybody else? Hallelujah. This is not the end of the meeting. This is the beginning. Got that? This is the beginning of the meeting. Glory to God. You're going to marinate this. Some say, well, I don't know if I got it instantly. You're going to marinate it in it all. You're going to marinate in it all morning. Glory to God. Something started here last night. Who was here last night? Something. It hasn't lifted, has it? I feel like it got stronger on me. It's like electricity coming through my hands. Glory to God. What's your condition? Well, we're not going to participate with it. Jesus, go right through her body now. That's it. That's it. Jesus, is the pain in your spine? Yeah. Right now? Not right. No, no, it can't be. It's in the anointing. Never again. In the name of Jesus. Anybody else? I can barely move. Glory to God. <laughs> oh, this is your sister? <laughs> okay. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm from England too. From the UK. I was, was born. Lift your hands as you do. The power of God comes on you. Glory. Jesus. As you do, the power of God comes on you. In the name of Jesus. Come back. Forever. Seal it by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Next. Okay. In the name. Move out of the way, sister. I don't want you. Jesus. 
Jesus. Jesus. Fire. And the Lord has said, it's like a new rank that gets put upon you. In the name of Jesus. You're, you're being promoted. In the name of the Lord. It's done. It's gone. What's your condition? No. 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 your hands all across this auditorium. Yes. Release that everyone in the name of Jesus. Just do what you couldn't do. When you feel that come on you. sister where are you from in England Suffolk I was educated in Sussex yeah hey what's he what you've been praying about is come up before the Lord He says it's granted access in the name of Jesus. The access has been granted and the petition has been heard. It is done, says the Lord. That's what he told me to tell you. Let it go right through you. Like I said, this is the beginning of the meeting. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. We're not concerned about anything, if you've not noticed. What's your name? Taylor. Were you here last night? Praise God. Thanks right now. Lay hands on Usher. Lay your hands on my wife. She's glory. Thank 
God for the doctor. Who does this belong to? Who does this belong to? this belong to? Whose is this? That anointing's on it. Lord, who are you going to go lay in hand? I need an usher. Who are you going to go lay hands on? Who are you going to put this on? Okay. take anything, but if you want to leave it, you can leave it. If you can't get up, just stay there. She's good. She knows. standing in the gap. <laughs> He's going to go pray for somebody. Glory to God. Who wasn't here last night? Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. <laughs> I just want to see. Praise God. Then what I've got then is from the Lord. Hallelujah. church announcements or come and get it. Glory. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. The anointing is so strong. The presence of God is so strong. Glory to God. Let me have that podium. Glory to Jesus. seed into the church your regular tithe and offering for Sunday morning just go and be obedient to God concerning those things later on in the meeting we'll give you an opportunity to sow in a revival if you're only going to sow into one offering please sow into the church you do that all the ways to give are on the screen or you know make your checks payable to destiny this would be a good Sunday to double your tithe thank God the tithe is not a the tithe is a calculation not anything to be prayed about 
Thank God the tithe is not 13.25%. Because I would have trouble figuring that out. But the Lord made it simple. Tithe is never to be prayed about. It's just a calculation. The offering is either to be prayed about or it's something that you want to do out of the goodness of your heart. So this is for the church right here. And, uh, and we want to sow into the church too. So if I could get a couple ushers that are not on offering duty to help us, we're going to do that in a minute. But if you've got your offering, your tithe for the church, just wait for a minute, we'll, we'll get that. you got your offering or your tithe for the church, well, man, are you going to come forward or are you going to pass it? How are you going to do it? Just come forward. real if the evangelist's wife is getting off the floor. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's 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 sow our tithe and offering into the Lord's house. Come on, let's do it. Glory to God. Let's make it happen. surplus in the name of Jesus we speak three years of surplus in the name of Jesus hallelujah and now I command the staff to increase I command the staff to increase the payroll to increase the ability to hire to increase in the name of Jesus send laborers into the harvest field hallelujah glory to God Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 I thank you for a fully staffed church in the name of Jesus. And I thank you the staff is well paid. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, we've heard about a vow of poverty, but right now we take a vow of prosperity. Whew. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand to heaven. Say, the Lord blesses me. The Lord keeps me. I will live even in an overflow of the abundance of heaven. Abundant life is my portion. More than enough is my way. I receive the blessing of the Lord upon my life. I will bless others. I will always have more than enough to do good when it is presented to me. Jesus, I am prosperous and will live in prosperity according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. One pastor told me, he said, man, why are you preaching on all that health and prosperity stuff? I said, well, I could, I could preach on poverty and sickness and release that on you. He said, oh, no, no, no. Glory to God. You think that's a, you think that's a made-up story? It's the truth. So I sent him a whole package of books on faith. Glory to God. 
Now we're going to give to you. I want all the young ladies under the age of 21 to, you're, you're, well, from, you're young, you're, but I, I wanted the young ladies to get this one. Right? The young, for youth. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, I've got, a, I've got enough too. Yeah. So we're having a ministry meeting right here. Yeah. Right, but this is for the young, this is for the youth. Right? And this is for... Right, 19 and under. Put up your hand if you're 19 and under, and they get that. Glory to God. Do you want to explain this? Do you want to say anything about it? Hallelujah. Woo! Oh, the Lord is good. And he is in this place. Hallelujah. You know, this is a regional church. This is not just a church that is going to make an impact in the city, but it's region. It's a regional work. It's a regional work. And people from this place will go out and touch nations. Amen? And touch different states in America and touch the world. But this church will make an impact in the region. In the region. Amen. You start declaring that. I know this is a praying church. And you start declaring that over, over your home and over this region. Amen. This, this thing's going to be so big that it, won't, it can't help but to touch the region. And it's a wave. It's a wave. It's a wave. And you make the choice whether you ride the wave or not. You make the choice. God's not going to make you ride the wave of revival. He's not going to make you ride it. You choose this day. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. We have to choose life or death. We have to choose, right? We choose revival. Revival is a choice. Love is a choice. Amen. To walk in love, to walk in revival, it's a choice. And it's not, you're not always going to feel like choosing it. Hear my words. You will not always feel like choosing it. But I promise you, if you make that choice and say yes and yield your life and surrender your life to God completely, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. He will not disappoint you. It might feel uncomfortable for a minute because he has to burn some things out of you that you've held on to for a long time. You've held on to it for a long time. But I encourage you to let the Lord burn it out and burn it away. And wash it away with the wave, amen? Wash it away in the river. Hallelujah. You don't have to hang on to it anymore. The Lord spoke to me a couple of years ago, and he spoke to me the words identity crisis. And not just in this world, this world is definitely in an identity crisis. We can see that. We can see that. It's all over the place. They're telling you, you can identify with whatever you want to. But we were all made, all human beings were made in the image of God. Male and female, he made them. But the church has to know who they are. The church cannot be confused with who they are and who God called them to be. The church cannot be confused with that. Amen? 
That is not God's will for your life to be confused with who you are. You are His. You are made in the image of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's who you're made in the image of. And nobody else and nothing else. The Word tells you who you are. And if you're confused about that, then you're listening to the devil. He's lying to you. You are not a failure. You are not a failure. You are not a victim. You're more than a conqueror. You're victorious through the blood of Jesus Christ and his resurrection spirit that lives inside of you. Amen? That is who we are. I'm telling you right now that if you're struggling with sin in your life, it's because you are believing something that is not true about yourself. God did not create us to willingly sin. Amen? He did not create us that way. He created us in his image to live holy and righteous. We are the righteousness of God. But if you're not seeing yourself like that, you're going to struggle. You've got to see who you really are according to the Word of God. And shame has no place in our lives. When there's shame attached to whether it's something that happened to you, right? Sometimes things happen to us in life. We go through traumatic things in life. And sometimes we identify with that. We identify with being abused. Or we identify with being divorced, right? Or we identify with, well, I failed at that, so I must be a failure. But these are lies from the pit of hell. Oh, I've struggled with this. Some of you, you struggle with the sickness for so long, you don't know how to live healed. You don't see yourself healed by the blood and the stripes of Jesus. And I'm saying that in love to you. I'm saying that because he wants you to be free. You are not depressed. You are not a depressed person. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy is medicine to you. We are supposed to be happy people. We don't have to take on generational things. Just because your daddy or your mother or your grandparents, well, I must, you know, I guess I have to deal with that because my daddy did. That is a lie. That is a lie. You do not have to live in that. I don't care what it is. It died 2,000 years ago. Jesus defeated that thing so you wouldn't have to live in it anymore. And that is the truth. That is the truth. We cannot even now more than ever we must know who we are in Christ we must walk in the authority that's been given to us are things going to come and try to attach themselves to us try to attack our lives yes but greater is he I don't care what you have or what you, actually, you don't even have it. It's not yours. 
When are you going to start resisting that thing? When are you going to start rejecting that thing? Amen? Who are we? Who are we? We are the children of Almighty God. Almighty God. And we have authority over our own lives and in our own homes. Amen? He's given us that power. Power. We are powerful people. We are powerful people. He's given us his name. We can use the name of Jesus that's above every name. That name is above depression. That name is above fear. That name is above sickness and disease. That name is above anything that can try and come against your life. We got to stop putting up with it. Amen? But we got to know who we are. We've got to be convinced of who we are. There is no condemnation. Whatever the struggle might be, don't, there is no condemnation. You are only struggling because you are believing something about yourself that is not true. And that's the reason why the Lord had me create this, this I call it a devotional, but it's, it's so much more than that. I get emails and calls from, from uh, I mean, it, anybody can read it. I, I wrote it because I have a heart for women and women's ministry. And so I, I wrote this with that in mind. It's called Revive Your Identity. And I get emails and messages of women who have struggled with things for years. And in an instant, the word, the word just turned that light on and set them free. Set them free. And now they don't identify with those things anymore. That they identify with who they are in Christ. They identify with being healed. They identify with being wealthy. Some of us, we didn't grow up blessed and prosperous and wealthy. And so I had to have a mind change. I mean, my parents were hardworking parents, but we always struggled. And so I always dealt with that struggle in my mind. Am I, am I, re I didn't even believe I was blessed. But the word changed all that the Word of God, and I had to stop identifying with struggling and start identifying with being a blessed child of God. Amen? And all of a sudden, I wasn't putting up with that struggle anymore. No, I refuse to struggle. I'm a child of God. I am not going to struggle anymore. I am blessed. I am healed. I am prosperous. I am loved and accepted. Amen? The spirit of rejection is broken off of your life. Some of you, you just, you grew up rejected your whole life. So you have trouble, ex right, receiving, receiving the promises of God. That's a lie. You are not. You are accepted. You are accepted. He's adopted you. You can cry, Abba, Father. Daddy, I need you. He's accepted you. Stop running around like you're some stepchild to him. You're not. You're not. He loves you as much as he loves Jesus. That's the truth. I know that's hard for us to, 
comprehend sometimes the love of God is so great. Amen. But that's who we are. We are a loved, accepted, blessed, healed, prosperous child of God. And when you're convinced of that, I'm telling you, those things that have tried to hold you back, they will not hold you back anymore. So I just want to bless you. I want to, I don't know how many I've got with the, for the women. Oh, you passed them all out. I know that's going to bless you. I know that's going to bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You ready to preach? How many people, how many people want to make sure they get this book? Hey, Amen. Well, you've already got it, so blessed. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, you'll take this copy. Perfect. There you go. Bless you. Bless you. Everybody's got. We do the backwards product table. Amen. And so we keep trying to have a product table, Pastor, but we just give it all away. That's we just can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. The Lord's called us to give away all of our product. He did that many years ago. And so that's why I don't carry a product table. I don't advertise all my books and different things. You just, you can get them all for free. Amen. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you, musicians. Glory to Mbashti. Malaka. Nebosh. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Shabam, bam, bam, da, 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 ba, shata. Mambo, bo, 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 shoro, bo, to, bo, bo, da, 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 ba, ta, ma, mande, ba, da, da, bo, men, be, shere, bo, kundo, bo, shoto. Men, be, 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 she, te, re, bo, ro, shoto, ba, tanda, ba, tana. Bam, 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 batala bakata. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're a new creature, a new species of being. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You're a new creation. There's three types of people in this world the Gentile, the Jew, and the new creation. You cannot be a combination of any of those, you can only be one of them. Amen. Glory to God. And you are a new creation. Those that have been born again and put their trust in Jesus have become new creations. And the royal and the broshta and the blood of Jesus is flowing through your veins. And somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. <sighs> Glory to God. If, you, if you're wondering, man, is there something wrong with him? No, they, I, I'm just having trouble walking. Amen. Just under the anointing. Glory to God. I'm just shuffling a little bit. What a night last night that we had. What a morning we've had so far. The presence of God is resting in this place. Oh, hallelujah. Those of that weren't here last night, hopefully you can sense the presence of the Lord here with, with, with us. And, um, and really this, this devotional that my wife wrote, uh, is really about living in revival. That's really what it's about. Because you can live like this. Do you understand that? You can live like this. You can live with the presence of God. You can live in communion with the Lord. You can live in this move of the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Now, I, I want to just recap a little bit of last night. And, um, and, and I want to continue this message that I've been preaching since last night. Might as well, you know, if you get a good thing going, you might as well not stop it. Amen. So I figured there was no better message than the, same, than the message I preached last night. <laughs> Glory to God. You know how, how that is? You know, people, they hear a song, they're like, oh, sing that again, sing that again. Well, how about a message? Yeah. Glory to God. Oh, preach that again, Brother Josh. Amen. So I'm not going to preach the whole message again, but I'm going to add a little to it. Glory to God. So the, for those, it's entitled, Don't Miss the Move of God. Don't miss the move of God. Don't miss what God's doing in this hour. And we learned about a few things last night. We learned that you can miss the move of God because of your religion. The way... Religion is man's effort to get to God. The way we're doing things to get to God. We've got to do this, got to do that, got to do this. No, no, you've got to confess Jesus is Lord. Amen. 
and receive him into your heart, you'll become born again. But he did everything that's needed to be done. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Paul says all works are like filthy rags. And so your religion will keep you away from the move of God. Your religion, your tradition will keep you away from the move of the Spirit of God. It will keep, it, it will, actually, it will keep it away from you. Religion limits access. Revival opens access. Come on, somebody. Religion always limits the people that are able to get to God. Oh, it can only be these priests or these, these uh, apostles or whatever. Mm -mm. Revival opens it to every man. Come on, somebody. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. Anybody can get into this. Glory. You don't have to have a special degree. You don't have to have gone through Bible college. Come on, somebody. Anybody can come to God no matter how old you are, how young you are. Glory to God. You don't have to have a set criteria say I might you might believe in a whole bunch of nonsense but you can still come to God and he will deliver you from it all come on somebody even a Democrat can come to God <laughs> glory to God <laughs> might not be a Democrat much longer amen hallelujah but, but anybody can come to God, a Democrat, a Republican, or whatever, or whatever, a Green Party candidate, whoever you are. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to know a whole bunch of stuff. You know, I was preaching this meeting up in the hills of, of Virginia, close to West Virginia, but in the hills of Virginia, and... I remember we had done a revival, we had done a week of revival at this old barn. It was an old red barn that they had been doing, I think I was doing the 75th annual camp meeting. And, uh, and they, they, I think they were taking a risk on having me come, amen. But I went there and we had a week of revival, you know, from the beginning to the end. You know, the pastor, when he, first brought me, when he first brought me in, he wasn't sure about if it was God's will to heal. I said, who taught you that? He said, well, I learned it in my Pentecostal Bible school. That sometimes God heals, maybe, sometimes, and sometimes no. Sometimes yes, sometimes no, and sometimes maybe. I'm like, where did you get that theology from? I said, I'll give you 24 hours to, to give me a New Testament scripture, amen, that it's not God's will to heal you, Amen. I'll give you 24 hours, Pastor. So he kicked me out of his truck at the hotel, came back, picked me up. We went to the meeting that night. The first, I felt the anointing. I said, the healing anointing is here. The first two people in the line were blind. And both of them, their eyes popped open. Glory. To, this is not in some Africa. This is in, in Virginia. Come on, somebody. One lady was legally blind. All she saw was a blur. The other little boy was blind in one eye. I lay hands on both of them. The power of God hit him. And then some lady, she needed a new heart, and she felt something get transplanted in, supernaturally into her body. And then it was like everybody in the whole building got healed of every single disease. Hallelujah. The pastor's in the background crying. And I'm like, sure glad it's God's will to heal. He took me back to the hotel that night and got out of the truck. You know, I'm a little funny, so I said, so I said hey, did you find that scripture? He said, get out of my truck. I don't want to talk to you. Mm -mm. And we had a glorious revival the whole week. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And revival, I've preached in 10 churches in that area. Revival fire hit that whole entire area. Glory to God. It's still shaking that area right now. There's still, shake, there's still ram ramifications of that move that happened. And uh, so I was coming, to, and we went in that. That was, the, that was the night one. Well, maybe it was night two. I don't know, but it was right at the beginning of the revival. I love it when the Lord does something right at the beginning. Shock the whole world. And we went on with the meeting. The last service, I did an altar call for being born again. I remember 
Somebody came running in from the parking lot. Some old brother, you know, he, was, he, he let his wife go into the meeting, but he, he, he was sitting out in the car. But he had his window ajar so he could hear the sermon. He came running in and said, I need to be born again. Glory to God. Then after the service, you know, we got everything uh, done. After the service, this, this little family came up, young family, about probably the age of Matt and, and uh, his wife and just this young family. And they came up to, to the front and they say, say, Pastor said, we need to be born again. I said, oh, that's great. What do you do? He said, we're the youth pastors at the church here. At the Pentecostal Spirit-filled Holy Ghost Church right here. I, I, I think they'd been the youth pastors for a few years there. Growed up in the church their whole life. But they weren't, they didn't, I preached on being born again. And they'd never heard about being born again. They had never heard about being born again. They just signed up. It was just part of their life. It was their religion. It wasn't a relationship. Come on, somebody. It was a religion to them. They were ra- you can be raised. People can be speaking in tongues all around you. You can see miracles in front of you, and it's just a religion to you. There's no li- there's, 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 You don't connect. The life of God is not connected to you. It's just a religion to you. And even in the most Holy Ghost places, there can be some people that are just stone cold, hard as a rock. And it's just religion to you. It's just religion. But I'm telling you, the Rushtemende, the fire of God is in here this morning. And if you're not born again, before the end of this meeting, you will be. Glory to God. God's going to touch your heart. God's going to take your stony heart and make it a heart of flesh. Glory to God. He's going to soften your heart. And that's what happened to these youth pastors. They realize we've been living in religion all our life. They're even on staff at the church, but we're not born again, preacher. I said, come here right now, lift your hands to heaven, and I'm going to lead you to Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And that day, those youth pastors were born again. (laughs) Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, born again born again see i'm bringing it back that phrase been out of the church too long i'm bringing it all the way back we're born again believers we've been born from above from a heavenly place glory to god we've been recreated god made into new species thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah thank you lord religion will cause you to miss the move of God when you're sitting in the same building that the move of God is happening. There's people that have been in our meeting. You're talking about it feels like angels are in the room. It, it, it's, it, 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 miracles are happening. The blind are seeing all types of things are, 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 are taking place. You can't, you, they, they're carrying me out of the meetings and there's people in those same meetings. They didn't feel a thing. And nothing. I don't, I don't sense nothing. I remember, I not use the denominational name, but I remember a denominational leader that had, was covering a group of churches. We, had, we went to one of their churches in this denomination, and we had a revival, and it, we, it started going. It started moving. Church started to pack out. And I think we were there four weeks and they brought the denominational leader in, their overseer, to come and sit in the meeting. After the meeting, place packed out, the move of God was on. After the meeting, the denominational leader, this is a leader, says, I don't see anything that special about this meeting. That's what he told the pastor. I said, I don't see a need to continue this. I don't see anything special about it. That's how it can be. He's probably not born again. Probably a denominational leader, probably sitting on the board of a bunch of stuff, not even born again. Not even born again. Just in religion, just as a career. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. If I'm in a career, shoot me and put me out of my misery. I ain't in a career. Glory to God. I didn't choose to preach the gospel. 
No, sir. No, sir. Glory to God. It's something that I can't live. I can't live if I don't. Hallelujah. Not something you sign up for just in your right mind. You, it, it took me under the anointing, totally drunk in the Holy Ghost for me to agree. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory. God made it fail. God made it fail. Amen. Everything that the devil tried, God made it fail. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory. God's making everything the devil's trying in your life right now fail. Glory to God. Everything the devil's trying to bring against you, it's going to fail. I said it's going to fail. It's going to fail. It's going to fail in the name of Jesus. Religion will cause you to miss the move of God. There's some people in that Brownsville revival that were there at the beginning of that Brownsville revival. They left the church. They got out of the church. No, this is not. And there's people right now, the revival's going across. The, they're, they're, they're coming against the move of God. Oh, no, this is not, they're not preaching the gospel properly. They're not giving an altar call. They're not preaching the full counsel of the word of God. Well, try preaching the full counsel of the word of God in one meeting. Go for it. Glory to God. <laughs> you didn't give an altar call properly. Well, that's, the, that's one meeting out of a hundred meetings. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. You can't do everything in one meeting. I've tried to do everything in one meeting in my younger days. I've tried to, haven't you done that, Pastor? You try to fit everything in one meeting. This is my one shot. Somebody give me a one shot. I'm going to fit everything in one meeting. It's a healing meeting. It's a deliverance meeting. It's a teaching meeting. Come on, somebody. It's an evangelistic meeting. It's a Holy Ghost meeting. Come on. I realize you just got to follow the Holy Ghost. And whatever meeting it's going to be, it's going to be a meeting. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you getting it over in this section? Come on, somebody. Oh, is that anointing reaching as far back as here? It is? Praise God. Let me get in here for a second. Excuse me. Glory. Thank you. Scoot over a little bit. Let me get, with the, let me get in the, my, my section. This is, feels like the young section. Glory. To, what's your name, buddy? Noah. Oh, that's a good name. Amen. Don't, mi don't miss the boat. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> Glory. Thank you, Lord. I feel the anointing in this section. I feel younger already. How old do you think I am? Just take a wild guess. Somewhere in the 50s. Oh, thank you. Amen. 52. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Am I a good singer? Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> See, as young people don't know much, but I'm just joking with you. Amen. Glory to God. Their brain is still developing. That's what's happening. That's why you think I'm a good singer. Amen. Or oh, you just said that to be nice to me. That's probably what you did. How many people know the Lord's going to bless all the young people in this church? How many people know the move of God is going to be on them? The anointing is going to be on them. Come on, stretch your hands toward the young people and me right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Shabbatana mandoroshto. Sheke mombo bodobo shoto. I thank you, Lord. You're going to touch all these young people. You're going to bless them right now in the name of Jesus. They're going to be caught in the wave of revival. They'll never be the same, Lord. We thank you for it. Glory to God. Come on, somebody thank him for it. Right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, sister. Yeah, that's right. You're my sister. Glory. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Somebody say religion will cause you to miss the move of God. Let me tell you this, young people. Never settle for religion. Never settle for it. It's cheesy. It's ugly. And it's not for me. 
It's a relationship with God. The call of God. See, before you even born, the call of God is on your life. So well, I'm not, I don't know if I'm, I'm not supposed to be a preacher. No, I'm telling you, the call of God. You could be anything and still be in the call of God. God's called you to advance his kingdom. God's called you to live for him. Amen? Amen? Yeah, nod your head. Yes, amen. Whether you agree or not, it's amen. If the preacher's this close, it's amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, say that with me. I don't want religion. Say, it's not about religion. It's not about tradition. What's it all about? Kicking the devil where it hurts. That's what it's about. Amen. And it hurts any way you kick the devil. Thank you, Lord. Religion will cause you to miss the move of God. See, I'm being deliberate with this this morning because this is Sunday morning. Amen? Even, even, even the most Holy Ghost churches have a little bit of religion on Sunday morning. Glory to God. It's okay. But, but, but this morning, religion is not going to stop the move of God. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Lord. And you're not going to miss the move of God. You will not miss the move of God. It is on you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you have a few more minutes? No? Don't miss the move of God. Don't let religion cause you to miss the move of God. Religious people will stare the anointing right in the face and not receive it. I want you to look at this real quickly, and you don't need to put the scriptures up there, but Holy Ghost, just help me right now. Because this is, if I can release this revelation to you. Something is going to break wide open. Whew, thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Jesus was the most anointed person to ever walk the earth. Right? He's the most anointed minister. How many people would say with an uplifted hand, if Jesus said he was going to be at Destiny Church, you were going to be there? Amen. Yeah. You know, if Pastor Chris said, hey, we booked Jesus for next weekend. And he's going to be conducting a miracle crusade right here. at Beth- I don't think anybody is going to miss it. Glory to God. And I think some people are going to take their cats and dogs to the meeting, too. Come on, somebody. I don't want nobody to miss this meeting. Now, Jesus, in Mark chapter 5, there's three notable miracles. One The legion of devils is cast out of the man. Number two, the woman with the issue of blood is healed. I don't have time to get into all these different scenarios, but it's a notable miracle. I feel the anointing all over me. Glory to God. And we're going to lay hands on everybody this morning. Everybody that wants a refreshing from the Lord. You know, Pastor, there's atmospheres that are difficult to preach in because there's such a resistance. <laughs> and there's, Af- there's, the there's, 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 the, 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 there's atmospheres that are difficult to preach in because it's so saturated with the Holy Ghost that all you want to do is lay down. <laughs> and that's the atmosphere I'm in right now. <laughs> I don't feel any resistance at all. Glory to God. All I feel is, Lombroste kene shola. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good news is all you young people, you're going to be praying in tongues in a little bit. So you're going to be like, what? What's that? Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Where were we? 
notable miracles. And the, thank you, honey. And the, the third notable miracle was raising from the dead Jairus' daughter. He was flowing in this anointing. That's happened to me. He's flowing. I'm, I'm in one place, and that anointing is so strong. And I'm flowing in that anointing. So he's off to the next seat. See, Jesus was a traveling minister. He was a revivalist. He actually operated in all five gifts of the, all nine gifts of the Spirit, and all five, uh, m- yeah, ministry offices. Amen. God, I can't even, I don't even know. Glory to God. He said, I didn't know Jesus spoke in tongues. Come to me later, and I'll give you the scripture. Glory. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, Father. So, those things are happening. And then he says, in chapter 6, because there's no chapters and verses in the original, and so we'll just keep on reading there. And he said, and then he went out from there, from those meetings. You talk about the electricity, even after the woman with the issue of blood got healed. You're talking about the electricity after Jairus' daughter got raised from the dead. I mean, what are you going to do? You bring a dead child into a meeting and they come alive. You, the whole of the Mississippi Gulf Coast is going to be trying to get in this building. Everybody was trying to get. Remember how Jesus over there, I believe it's in Mark chapter 2, how they lowered the man down through the roof. That's the type of That's the type of revival Jesus was doing. Glory to God. I know a lot of people want to paint Jesus as some sort of meek person. No, he was a fiery revivalist that people could not stay away. That there was standing room only in every building. He filled every building, every hillside. Come on, somebody. The crowds were unbelievable. So, oh, I just like small church. Well, then you're not going to like what Jesus was doing. Everywhere he went, crowds of thousands and tens of thousands would gather together because the, because the miracles were flowing like a river. And so that's what was happening in these meetings. And then he goes over to verse 6, chapter 6. He said, then he went out from those meetings and he came to his own country. I like to say his own church. And his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things or really get that power? And what wisdom is it with which he he, he, he has... That such might, what wisdom is it that he has that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Glory to God. So Jesus, he didn't stop. The anointing didn't stop. He was in, he he went to the next meeting and started to release the anointing in his hands. See, a lot of people don't understand the ministry of Jesus. The ministry of Jesus is a ministry of laying on of hands. Are you with me? I mean, that's what Jesus was doing. Fire, fire, healed, healed, healed. And he told us in Mark chapter 16 that we're to cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, speak with new tongues. Come on, something. <sighs> Glory to God. And so, that, so he continued that in that meeting, and that revival was still hot. Hot. <sighs> and then in verse 3 it said, is this, uh-oh, is this, it's, it started to say, is this, Verse 3 said, Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, the brother of Jose, I like to say, uh, Judas and Simon or Simeon? Are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. What? 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 Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, just a few verse, few little lines up here. It says he was performing miracles by his hands. And now, see, he was flowing in the Holy Ghost, but now somehow they got offended. Glory to God. Maybe Jesus stopped to receive the offering. I don't know. (laughs) 
Glory to God. See, that offended some people right there. I'm just trying to get that religion out of you. Come on, somebody. That, that's how my mind thought. I saw it. I, I felt that before when I stopped just to receive the offering and then the, it gets sucked out of the room. Glory to God. And the scripture doesn't say that, but somehow it changed. What, you know what happened here? What it says is they started to treat what was holy as common. They started to treat what was holy as common. Oh, isn't this just the carpenter's son? Isn't that Mary, his mother? Isn't that his brother, Simon? Isn't that, oh, that, that's, that's just Jesus. Oh, I remember Jesus. That's Jesus. And all of a sudden, the anointing stopped. All of a sudden, these people that had actually received the move a few minutes earlier, they were like, yeah! Fire, revival. And then all of a sudden they recognized him. Said, oh, we know Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, they, they, turned, they turned to their religion. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, I remember this. Mer, Mer, oh, I remember this move. Yeah, yeah, that happened to me in the 50s. Okay. You're turning back to your religion. Oh, yeah, and I can say it myself. I'm old enough now to say, to say, oh, yeah, I remember this. This was in the 90s. I, oh, this was in the 80s. Come on, somebody. Oh, this was in the 70s. I can go back, keep going back. This was in the 70s. I remember this as a child, and I do. I remember some of the, I remember the moves that are going on. I remember them. Glory to God. But you know what? I'm not going to treat what I know is holy as common. I'm not going to treat that anointing as a common thing. I'm going to receive it. Glory to God. Even though I've been, listen, I told you last night, I've been in thousands of revival meetings. I've sat under some of the great generals from Reinhard Bonnke to Steve Hill to Dr. Rodney Howard Brown and many others. I've sat under that anointing and been laid hands on by all those greats. Come on, somebody. And and But that was at another time. And now is a different time. Glory to God. And I'm not going to treat what I know is holy as common. Glory to God. But I'm going to receive the fresh move of the Holy Spirit. I've been in revival. I've been under the anointing. I've been so they have to carry me out of the meetings. But there's more. I'm hungry for more. I'm hungry for more. It's a new day has dawned on the body of Christ. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we're hungry. We don't want religion. We want you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country or church. Among his own relations, in his own home. Now, listen to this. He didn't say he would not, but he said he could not. He could not do any mighty works there. Whew. Could not. Could not. Could not do any mighty works there. I mean, can you imagine, Pastor Chris, if Jesus is in the green room with you, saying, mm -mm, I'm not going to be able to do any miracles tonight. Shh. No, no, Jesus. Mm -mm. I mean, you'd be at his feet. You'd be at his feet. Uh-uh. No, Jesus. No, Jesus. What do you mean? There's places all across America right now that Jesus can't do any mighty works in. I can't do any. Can't do them. Can't do them there because I'm not welcome. You know, a lot of people say, well, you can't turn the anointing of Jesus off. Yes, you can. You can turn it off. You, you can shut it down. You can close it down because Jesus will not violate the human will. Whew, glory to God. You can shut that thing down. Say, man, I don't, why is God not touching me? You need to open your heart. You need to open your heart. 
You need to open your heart. Well, I want an authentic move of God. Glory to God. I want an authentic move of God. I want God just to jump on me. No, you got to go after him. I said, you got to go after him. You got to go after him. He's not coming to jump on you. He's not coming. To, that's, it, that, 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 that's just like the person that said, well, he'll save me when he saves me. Yeah, you're going to go to hell like that, friend. Yeah, he'll fill me when he fills me. He'll heal me when he heals me. No, you got to go after it. You got to go after it. You got to get after it. I know a lot of people don't like to hear that. They, it's always a sovereign move of God. Yeah, God's sovereign. God does incredible things like that. But, 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 but he responds to the hungry. 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 He doesn't just come, he didn't, he didn't just come down and just sit on Brownsville. He didn't just come down to Dr. Rodney's meetings and just sit on those meetings. No, there was people crying out to God. There was people crying out to God. There was people who say, I'm hungry for more. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Got a few more minutes? I'm going to lay this down here and give you an opportunity to respond. Now he could do no mighty works except he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. I like to say, except he laid his hands on a few hungry people. There's always a few. There's always a few. Always a few. I've been in meetings like that when there's been two or three hungry people. And I, just, I can see them. And I pull them out. And I minister just to them. I've done that before. I remember I was in Oklahoma one time preaching and I'd just flown in from Los Angeles from great mighty revival. We saw signs and wonders. Hundreds and hundreds of sa saved. Every, probably 300 saved a night. And I came into this church and it was like raising the dead. It was like all the anointing left me that I had. I said, what's going on here? Total religion. Total oppression. I couldn't break it. I couldn't break it because their will was against it. I couldn't get, it, couldn't get that breakthrough. A lot of pastors said, man, I just couldn't get that breakthrough. It's not you, brother. Don't worry about it. Shh. And then in the corner of my eye, close to the end of the service, I saw a couple young men. They were shaking like this. I said, what's happening there? I said, bring those brothers forward. They came forward shaking under the anointing. I was like, you go to this church. They go, no. I said, fire, fire. Pick them up, pick them up. Fire, fire. Pick them up, pick them up. I was just picking them up, fire on them. I laid on, I think I laid down on top of them. I don't know. After the meeting, I said, where are you guys from? He said, we were Googling the word revival. Mm -hmm. And we found your name. And it was a message that you'd preached at Old Roberts University. And when I'd preached, uh, I was doing a youth, some sort of youth I don't know, training for youth pastors. They brought me in at Old Robert University to do it, and I preached on revival. And these students had listened to this word on revival. Come on, somebody. And they'd Google that, and they'd listen to that word on revival, and they said, we got to find wherever Josh Radford is, and we've got to go to that meeting. Glory to God. They drove three hours to that meeting to find me in Oklahoma. I said, you guys are staying the night. Glory to God, because you're going to be with me in the next meeting. Amen. That's hunger. That's why the rest of the church wasn't getting touched, but those young people were receiving from God because they were hungry. They were hungry for the Lord. Now he could do no mighty works there except lay his hands on a few hungry people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went 
about the villages and circuits teaching the Word of God. He called his twelve to him. And he began to send them out two by two. And he gave them power over unclean spirits. Glory to God. And if you read, if you read keep reading there, it said, it, he, he said to them, and if you go into houses and stay there, and if they don't welcome you in that city, shake the dust off your feet, and it would have been better for that city in the day of judgment than Sodom and Gomorrah. It would be better for Sodom and Gomorrah than that city. You talk about, but why? Because Jesus imparted his anointing to them. Come on, somebody. And they broached their mamba bandereshtik. Thank you, Lord. He imparted that anointing to them. Because his disciples were hungry. So let me close this. What, hap- what happens here in this passage? What's the flow of this? When you treat what is holy as common, you dishonor the anointing. You dishonor the anointing. You dishonor the anointing. And out of dis, whatever you dishonor will offend you. And whatever you're offended by, you start to have unbelief. And where there is unbelief, there is no faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's the road that it goes down, just like that. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I will not dishonor the anointing. I will not dishonor the Holy Spirit. I will respond to God. Glory to God. I will respond to God. I will respond to God. When you respond to God, He responds to you. When you respond to God, He comes to you. He comes to rescue you. Glory to God. They dishonored the holy. They dishonored the holy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Dishonor. Leads to offense. Last night we told you, you said, you got to be too hungry to be offended. See, our religion, our flesh, gets offended by revival. That's natural. Because you're being pulled into something that your flesh is about to burn. <laughs> Your flesh is about to be crucified. Your flesh is about to be tried by fire. (laughs) Purified. And it's an offense. What what did the Bible tell say about Jesus? He's a stumbling block and offense to many, right? And 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 uh, it will it will it it will cause you, you see, revival is gonna cause you to change all your schedules. It's going to be messy. It's going to be, it's not going to be comfortable. Come on, somebody. It's not, it's not. It's not. Why are you speaking tongue so much? Because I'm trying to speak English, but it's not working that well. <laughs> Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank God. Thank God. Thank, say this, I will not be offended. I will not be offended. I will not be offended. I will receive what the Lord has for me. See, when we're in a religion, we get offended by change. And we get offended by the unknown. Especially us that are schedulers, want to schedule everything and do this and that. And then, and then we're like, well, what's going to happen? We don't know. 
Oh, no, 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 no. What, 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 yeah, all the, so, oh, well, well, we've got a whole series. We've got a series. And people ask me, can you fit this, can you fit into our series on this? No. I'm not going to fit into your series. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Are you receiving this word to you tonight or this morning? It's night somewhere. Glory to God. It's about to get really messy in here. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to sow a seed into revival. Is that okay? I'm not going to say hardly anything about this. I'm just going to say, sow your best seed. It costs thousands of dollars to do what we're doing across the nation. Tens of thousands. So if the Lord's blessed you in a way, maybe you can cover a whole budget. Each week it to, for, to do this, it costs us about $5,000 every week to do it in every city. Because one of the things that we don't do, we, we're staying with Pastor Chris because we love them. We want to stay. I don't normally stay with pastors, but we, so I, I like my space, privacy. <laughs> But we, we love them, so we're staying with them. But we don't, we don't come with our gas receipt to any pastor, you know, like this, how much gas it costs us to get here. We, we pay for all of our own plane, plane trips. We play, pay for all of our own hotels. There's no church that can't have us. None. Zero. There's none. We don't put any requirement on the offering. Say, a lot of churches, they say, what is your fee? What is your fee? Because some people, you know, my fee is 25000 or my fee is 10000 you know, whatever, whatever, whatever your fee is. A lot of times we get above all the fees because that's not how we operate. We sow a seed. That's why we give away all of our products. We're just sowing seeds. Many meetings, we've got thousands and thousands of dollars into the meeting before we even receive an offering. But we do that by faith so there's not one church that can't, that can't have us. Glory to God. The Lord told us to do that a long time ago. There's not, and Pastor Chris will tell you, there's not very many evangelists that do that. If he wants somebody, he's got to play two round trip tickets, two or three hotel rooms, do this, this, make sure it's a minimum requirement. I don't even have to talk about it to anybody. Why? Because, number one, my partners send me here. We've got faithful partners and churches that partner with us. But also, the body of Christ responds. The body of Christ responds. And you know how I can read you the list of all the places. They're coming in daily. People are calling for us. They need, re- I feel the Holy Ghost. Jesus! Amen. Jesus! Amen. Jesus! Amen. We've laid down our life for the move of God. We've put no hindrance on the church. We bless every church we go to. So if you can, you help us. You help us. I want to challenge you to help us. Help us. Maybe you can cover a week. Maybe you can cover a month. Four times five is 20. That's how much that is. Maybe you can cover a year. I don't know. Maybe God's blessed you. People say, well, you don't say that. I don't care what people say. There's people that God is going to use to finance the kingdom of God. And this... And this is the, this is the, <laughs> this is the last hour. Amen. And if God's blessed you, Amen. if God's blessed you some way, I'm asking you to give. I'm asking you to give. This is city number one. This is our number one. This is one of our. We're probably going to be in 30, 30 40 cities and it hasn't disappointed that move is on people the move is on and america needs this i just need some faithful people to help us because glory to god so if that's the way the lord's blessed you write your checks to destiny church they're going to give us everything that comes in they've always done that they're going to give us every single penny the church doesn't take anything. They, they bless us. 
So be obedient. I know God's touching some hearts. And maybe say, say, say well, nah, I, I don't, I'm not like that. I can't do that. Do what you can do. Do your best seed. Sow a seed of faith. It's a seed that you might be a little bit fearful to give. But it's something the Lord's spoken to you. That's all I'm going to say about the offering. Rashta. Badanam. Who wants revival all across America? Well, let's do this together. You know, I'll, I'll say one other thing. As we're preparing to give, as the Lord speaking to you, ask the Holy Ghost right now what to give. Prepare your hearts to give. We've been, we're connected with the denominations and many different networks of pastors, of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pastors. And I, I hate to say this, but nearly every network has zero full-time traveling evangelists. Zero. 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 I know, there's other, I know there are traveling evangelists, but it is a handful. So I thought that was a TV picture. Yeah, but they all have churches. They, all, they don't travel full-time like we do. They don't carry that revival like we do. They don't, that's not it. There's almost zero. There's a handful. I'm talking about I can probably name four or five in the whole world. But there is a great, so that's one of my prayers too, to raise up revivalists. They're going to take it to the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. And we'll do that as the Lord permits us. Glory to God. But there's almost zero. There's major denominations that have zero traveling full-time evangelists. Zero. And so, glory to God. Help us with the best seed that you can this morning. Say this with me. Say, Holy Ghost, speak to me concerning my giving, and I'll be obedient to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, come forward. Put the buckets there. If you want to give, do you need to say anything, Pastor Chris? Okay. If you want to give by online, there's a kiosk back there. You know how to do that. If you can't figure out how to do that, ask one of the staff members. They'll help you. Even if you are giving.
Broshta. Can I have somebody hit the keys? Is that possible? I don't know. I've probably everybody's probably working at something. Broshta mamba banda lamba hum broshta banda le kereshta monda roshta. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't step into the Jesus moment, did I? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't think so. Hallelujah. 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 Whose is this hat? Come, brother. Are you his wife? Come with him. Have an usher. Were you here last night? Any of this stuff up, up here yours? The black hat is yours too. Oh, you're getting a double portion. You got two hats. Hallelujah. Let me have another usher. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We are so glad you joined us this morning for this service. We hope that God did incredible things in your life, and we are praying that God will continue to do great things in your life. Look, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, and you can see what's going on here at Destiny Church. But most of all, continue to connect and be personal in relationship with Jesus Christ. We love you. God bless you. We hope to see you online again.